Welcome to Spine Guy. I'm Dr. Brian Sue, a fellowship trained spine surgeon. The Spine Guy is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. Today we'll be talking about non-operative or non-surgical treatments of lumbar synovial facessis. Hopefully you watched a prior episode of what a lumbar synovial facessis is. As a reminder, this is the low back. There's the back of the spine, there's the front. The lumbar facet joint is this little joint that connects the bones on the back of the spine. That joint is covered by a thick joint capsule and inside is something called a synovial membrane. The synovial membrane produces synovial fluid, which is the lubricating like fluid for the joint. When there's arthritis, which is loss of cartilage in the joint, or when there's spondylolisthesis, which is abnormal motion of the joint, that joint capsule gets stretched, the synovial membrane starts to outpouch and it forms this cyst that is outside the joint cavity. So what happens when the cyst is pushing on the nerve? It can cause back pain, it can cause buttock and leg pain, but interestingly, sometimes cysts are just found incidentally, meaning we get an MRI of someone, they don't actually have buttock or leg pain, but then you see a cyst. In that situation, you don't have to do anything about it. So the facetis are not a dangerous thing. They're not tumors. They do not have to come out. You can totally just leave it alone if it's not causing any symptoms. And frankly, if the symptoms aren't horrible, you really don't have to do anything about it. Now, if it is causing severe buttock and leg pain, then of course we'd have to do something about it because patients don't want to live with buttock and leg pain. The buttock and leg pain is never an emergency unless there's significant weakness or bowel bladder dysfunction, meaning you're losing control of your urine or you're losing control of your bowel. And you'll have to consult your doctor to understand whether or not your cyst is causing severe weakness or significant bowel bladder dysfunction. Now, if the cyst is causing pain, there's lots of ways to treat this non-surgically. One is to take the inflammation off the nerve so that the nerve can learn to live in a small space. So even though the cyst is still there and it may be getting bigger or smaller over time, it's not causing buttock and leg pain because you've controlled the inflammation. One very good way is just taking anti-inflammatory medication, such as things like ibuprofen or Aleve. Typically, patients make the error of not taking enough of the medication with not enough frequency. So the problem is if you take ibuprofen and you just take them when you have pain, the amount of ibuprofen goes up and down and up and down. You don't have a consistent level in your body to really take inflammation off the nerve. For my patients, I usually recommend 800 milligrams of ibuprofen three times a day for 14 days. This should be done on the direction of a doctor. I always have patients take it with food and if you have uh, GI issues in your stomach, or you have kidney issues, obviously you can't do that. Again, you have to consult your doctor, but the take home message is to take it at a more consistent level, like an antibiotic for a full 14 days, even if you don't have pain. The next class of drugs is something called oral steroids. So oral steroids, the most common ones, prednisone. Prednisone is extremely powerful anti-inflammatory. I usually have patients take 60 milligrams to start and they taper down 10 milligrams a day. So 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10 over six days to take the inflammation off the nerve. And again, that has to be done on the direction of your doctor. There's also nerve medications that can affect your brain's ability to, to process nerve pain. Those are called gabapentin, which is also Neurontin. There's also a type of drug called Lyrica that's also for nerve pain. Now, lastly, in terms of medications, there's narcotics. So narcotics are things like Norco or Percocet, Oxycodone, things like that. In general, those tend to be not so good for nerve pain. They're just dulling your sensation so you don't feel the nerve pain. And that also has to be prescription under direction of a physician. You can always try physical therapy for core strengthening, acupuncture, chiropractic care, just to see if those things help, the back pain as well as the buttock and leg pain. Those are all okay things to try uh, for a cyst that's pushing on the nerve. One of the best things we can do to take inflammation off the nerve is something called an epidural steroid injection. I have a great episode on uh, what happens during a lumbar epidural steroid injection, but this is done by an anesthesiologist, a pain management doctor, interventional radiologist, sometimes even a spine surgeon, almost always done at the surgery center, sometimes done at the clinic, but it involves taking a needle and putting that needle over the nerve and dripping a little bit of steroid, again, that strong anti-inflammatory, directly over the nerve so that the nerve sees the most powerful anti-inflammatory it can. Again, that's shrinking the nerve. It's not really doing anything for the cyst. Patients can have up to two epidurals separated by uh, six weeks, as you'll see in my other video, to try to take inflammation off that nerve. At the end of the day, the cyst is still causing mechanical compression on the nerve because that cyst 
is actively pushing on the nerve. So when it's a structural problem, we can surgically go in there and remove the cyst by making a little opening. Now that's formal surgery. We always try non-surgical interventions first, reserving surgery as the last option. There are two fairly effective non-operative ways to take pressure off the nerve by decreasing the size of the cyst. That can be done either with cyst aspiration. So aspiration means to draw back and suck something back or cyst rupture. Now rupture, as you probably can guess, means to increase the pressure on the cyst to try to rupture the cyst. Cyst aspiration, cyst rupture is also done by the same folks that do the epidural steroid injection. It's almost always done at the same time as the epidural steroid injection because it's also done in the surgery center. Now, obviously we have to make sure the needle gets to the right place. And so these are almost always done under x-ray or CT guidance. So here I have a model of the cyst. There's a facet joint, there's a cyst. And during a facet joint aspiration, what happens is this needle goes in and it sucks the fluid up. So it's decreasing the size of that cyst. So now you don't see as much of the cyst there because the fluid is inside this syringe and needle here. We've sucked the fluid out of the joint. The other way to do it is cyst rupture, which is again to put a needle inside where the cyst is but now pressurize it instead of aspirating it back, we create increased pressure and we try to explode the wall of the cyst. Uh, so here we'll see an example of a cyst rupture. This is one of my patients. This is the MRI. There's a front of the spine, there's a back of the spine. Uh, you'll see this fluid filled cyst there. And here you'll see the cyst rupture. So you see the dark contrast explode around the spine. And so in theory now they've exploded the wall of the cyst. So how effective is cyst aspiration or cyst rupture? Here's a study that looks at patients pooled across multiple studies which show that 60% of patients had cyst resolution, but a third needed repeat procedures for cyst recurrence. When you aspirate a cyst particularly because you haven't done anything to the wall of the cyst, that cyst could recur because there's still synovial fluid that's being made. Anecdotally in my practice and also with the anesthesia pain management doctor in my practice, we find that cyst rupture seems to be more effective than cyst aspiration. That's because when you rupture the wall, even if there's more fluid coming out, there's less chance of recurrence of the cyst. Here's a paper that looks at cyst rupture and shows that successful cyst resolution happens in up to 80% of patients. However, sometimes even if you rupture a cyst, the pain relief isn't enough. So up to 50% of patients subsequently required surgery because the symptoms were not completely relieved. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned a little bit about non-operative treatment of lumbar synovial facet cysts. On the next episode, we'll be talking about surgical treatment of lumbar synovial facet cysts. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button.